The model jet engine is a scaled-down version of the real thing. It's essentially the same technology that lifts enormous aircraft off the ground and propels them through the sky. These engines were first developed for model aircraft in the 1980s, and they created an immediate sensation on the runway. For some model aircraft enthusiasts, tiny turbines are now the only way to fly, because they look and sound like a real turbojet. It's a touch of authenticity that can allow the imagination to really take off. These mini jets start with the base plate. It's the piece that all the other turbine parts will be attached to. Automated tools transform a piece of aluminum into an aerodynamic shape. The little blades cut into the perimeter will act as airfoils, contributing to lift and thrust. It takes just minutes to go from a metal disc the size of a hockey puck to a precision part. Next, a worker laser welds the seams of a steel canister, creating what looks like a large can with holes. This is the jet engine's combustion chamber, where a mix of fuel and air will be ignited to drive the turbine. He now inserts a hollow cylinder into the base plate and then presses a fuel distribution ring into the plate. With the parts correctly aligned, he places the assembly in a metal stand. He dips screws in a thread-locking compound and drives them into threaded slots in the base plate. This secures and cements the base plate assembly. He now holds the base plate unit above the combustion chamber while he inserts the tiny fuel delivery tubes into the chamber. He flips the chamber around to slide the tubes further inside and complete the job. The stator vane, pressed onto the other end of the chamber, will redirect the flow of gases to the turbine wheel. And now, the glow plug, so named because it glows to ignite the fuel inside. He pops it into a threaded slot on the side of the combustion chamber, which is by now encased in an outer shell. He installs the turbine and shaft, sliding the shaft into the center cylinder. He supports the shaft on both ends with thrust bearings and washers, pressing the parts into place. Next is the compressor wheel which pressurizes air on its way into the chamber. Once installed, the compressor wheel spins at a blurring speed and a computer analyzes it for the slightest vibration. Any vibration would signify an imbalance. The technician drills away tiny bits of metal to lighten the area of imbalance. The exact spot was pinpointed by the computer. He gives the compressor wheel another spin. Again, the computer detects a small imbalance, and more material must be removed. This process is repeated several times until the compressor wheel is perfectly balanced, and the computer gives it the green light. After that, he balances the turbine wheel on the other end of the shaft. This mini jet engine is now ready for the starter motor. He installs it on the shaft protruding from the compressor, and anchors it with screws. Once in place, it will spin the shaft until enough compressed air is produced to ignite the fuel. This plastic tubing will deliver gas to the engine and oil for lubrication. He adds a little of the oil for the initial lubrication of the bearings. Next, he heats one end with a lighter. This makes the plastic supple so it easily fits onto the connector. He wires the starter to a battery and tests the motor. It works, so he snaps an aluminum cover onto the assembly. This model jet engine is ready for the final test. Locked down in a test box, they pump fuel into it and bring it up to full throttle. Using computerized equipment, the technician monitors the output and confirms the engine is producing an adequate amount of thrust. That means it's ready to leave the factory and take flight. In total, it takes about six hours to make a model jet engine. But after that, the sky is the limit.